like an email from a couple of you, actually one group, they had some trouble accessing the Obnet Labs. Did, has anyone experienced the same issue or that was like an isolated incident? Oh, there is something problem with the license. Uh, they didn't upgrade the license or something for the Upnet, and uh, I also couldn't log into the Upnet. I think everyone had the, the same issue, Professor. Okay, so first of all, I don't want anyone to panic. You know, continue a report and presentation. You know, business as usual. If you can't access and haven't saved any Upnet graphs or something, it's not the end of the world. Like, first and foremost thing, please do not panic. Okay, that's my message to you. Um, yeah, and let's just go ahead and proceed with what you guys have. If Opnet got restored before time, then yes, uh, show me the graphs and the design and whatever you have. Uh, if not, that that's fine. Okay, but just highlight to me what you did in Opnet that was not that you could not show due to the uh, glitch. Okay? Thank you, Thank you Professor. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're welcome, guys. But I mean, again, trust me. This is, yes. I have one question because uh, in order for us to access our um, existing, the, the project that we were working on to show you the, um, the drones and, and so on and so on, we actually have to access Opnet, and it doesn't allow us to, to log in um, and have this, um, you know, we, we can't go in and even take you pictures. You just heard what I said? Excuse me? Did you hear what I just said? Did you hear what I just said? Yes, I did. Um, I'm not saying, I'm not talking no, about the graphs. If you don't professor. have access to Opnet, it's not the end of the world, just because the report doesn't only have Opnet. It has your own design, it has a background, it has like current trends, future trends. Industry leaders has other aspects. Okay. Okay. So I, what I just said, if you don't have access to Opnet, it's not the end of the world. Just continue business as usual and show me what you have. Okay. Uh, if it happens, then you get access to Opnet in the next day or so. Then yes, show me the graphs and stuff. Did I answer your question or did I address your concern? Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, and, and yeah, by, by the way, in, in real life, a lot of things like this unfortunately going to happen to you. You know, like one day prior to the deliverable, you know, things will go wrong, software will, will go down, the server will go down. So the most important thing just, you know, don't get frustrated. Don't don't panic. Because if you panic, you're not going to be able to do anything. Especially if it's outside your like out, out out of your hand. So just do your best, and that's it. Okay. Um. So any questions regarding this? So if again, so just to summarize, if Obnet continues to be unaccessible, don't worry about it. Uh. But if Opnet is accessible in the next few days, you know, I'm sure you've done a lot already. Just get me what you have, you know? It doesn't, it doesn't have to be like fully complete. So it's okay, you know? So just, just tell me, yes, Professor, uh, we're planning on finishing this piece, but... But due to the this glitch for the licenses, we're not able to finish. That that's fine. Okay. Everyone is good now. Yeah. The only one thing can I ask you? Uh, sure, uh, sure. In case of submitting a report, is it is it okay to postpone it a little bit after the presentation, just to, to in hope that we're gonna get access and we can be, be put the uh, graphs and stuff there. Yes, a, a very nice point. A, ver, a very nice point, yes. So basically, um, we'll wait as long as you're not going beyond the final. So, so here, here's the thing. I like to give, like, I like to...
when you guys take the final, I like to have everything ready. Okay. So I give the grade like a, a day or two after the final. Because uh, some of you want to graduate. They want like a proof of graduation for jobs. And, and you know, people want to travel. Like, uh, like everyone has their own personal stuff. So uh, one of my aspects or philosophies, I like to give the grades as soon as possible. Um, for the sake of the students, okay? So, yeah, so... When, when did we say that the final again? Uh, 20, 21st. Okay, so we'll, we'll make that the 21st. Uh, again, just in case that, that this issue hasn't been resolved for a long time, okay? Um, so I contacted the, 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 the school admin and um, the lab technician. I mean, the, not the lab technician, but the lab manager. And he's working on it. Yo, um, so, so it the should presentation be, it should be okay. is on Thursday, and he said the final is the 21st? Okay. Um, so, yeah, for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Professor, are you muted? Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, something wrong. It got muted by... Okay. Thank you so much. I've been talking for the past two minutes. Oh, my God. Okay, thank you so much. Something is not really adding up today. Um, no, so I was saying today will be a very short lecture. We'll, we'll continue the, the TCP conversation. Just like four slides. I'm, I'm going to go like the last four or five slides. I'm not going to go through the whole deck. Um, and uh, for the bonus assignment, uh, I locked already the account for those students who have already submitted. Uh, so you're going to get the bonus if you submitted before the, the, the class and had in the subject bonus assignment. It landed in the proper folder for it. And you're going to, the grades will be assigned to you automatically. Um, so basically I'll see if you need anything in the final. So if you, if, if, if like you get like, if you're short on A minus or B plus for instance, um, like one or two points, I'll give it to you based on that. Okay. Um, but for instance, if you if like, if I make my A minus, for example, okay, 90 and you get like 87, it will be like a big of a stretch, but if you get like 89 or 88, and you need like one or two points for the 90 to get A minus, I'll, I'll give that to you based on the assignment, okay? So that was before the the, the class started. So 6.30, if you submit it before 6.30 and you had in the assignment bonus, it's, it's, it's you're good already for that, okay? Um, so any questions before I proceed? Uh, professor, are you going to email us uh, lecture eight? Yes, I'll do that tonight. I'll do that tonight, okay? Um, once I finish thank the you. class, you're welcome. No, no, thanks to you for for, um, for reminding me. I mean, I did not forget, but it's always good to for you guys to follow up on these things. Okay. And it's not the end of the world. If, if you still have questions, please let me know. We still have a week. Um, can do it through email, Zoom before or after the presentation. So don't feel pressured. That's really the end of it. Okay. So you guys can see my screen, right? 
Yes. Yes. Okay, so I just want to talk about three things. The TCP slow start and open and, and close connections. So TCP slow start. UDP, if you have an old device that talks 10 packets per second and you have a new device that talks 1,000 packets per second, most likely or most of the configuration of UDP, there's no coordination. So the one that sends 1,000 packets per second will send it regardless of the receiver can handle 10 or, or a million. But for TCP, every packet counts. So because every packet counts, before the conversation happens, there's a negotiation between the two nodes. So you try to access your email server in, uh, in Texas. And you live in, in New York or New Jersey. So the TCP layers will, will negotiate a rate. Your, your phone or your, your, your laptop will say, like, you know what, I can talk 1,000 packets per second. And the server was like, I can talk 10,000 packets per second. So they have idea exactly on the rate. But because the TCB is super, super careful, they don't even take that for granted. So they don't, they don't take the theoretical rate. They do something called slow start. <laughs> it's very easy. But it just shows you how sensitive the TCB is. So that's what it does. So host A will send one segment to host B. Host B handled the one segment correctly with no delay, no error. Then host A will double up. Two, then four, then eight, then 16, 32, 64, 128. It keeps going up. But when it went up to 128, there was some packet loss. Then probably will reverse back down to 170. Oh, 170 is good. So let me go to 175. Uh, 175, I lost two packets. So let's go to 172. So you guys see, so it goes up, 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 up. Then once it, it hits a snag, it starts going down, down until it reaches the, the perfect um, rate. So that's basically the slow start, and it's very unique to the TCP layer, to the transport layer, to the TCP protocol. Uh, any questions? All right. I think, does it have to start at one? Isn't that like kind of a waste of time? No, no, no. Of course not. It's just, it's just again, I, I like in my lecture to show the, like, the, the simplest case possible. Uh, no, it doesn't really make sense to do like one second. Because if you're talking about like thousand segments a, a second, and the other person, the other node will say like 2,000, it doesn't make sense to go from one. It probably will have like a, a floor. Um, you know, depends on the version of the TCP. But it doesn't go to, from one. It doesn't start, it doesn't start from one. Everyone good here? Yes. yes. Okay. So let me talk again a little bit about connection and connection oriented and connectionless. We talked about it like for 15, 20 minutes a couple of classes ago, but I'll go over it quickly. UDP and the internet by default, it's connectionless. Meaning what? You have your email account open on your website, uh, on, on your laptop. You have the false feeling you're connected in the background. Well, most likely you're not, because you use UDP. In TCP, the protocol ensures that you are connected. And if you're talking, we can't hear you. No, no. In, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. I mean, I got this message last time uh, that I need to update Zoom, but I just ignored it. Taking away. Um, I'm sorry? Nothing. Yeah, I, I got this message after I finished with you guys last time, two days ago, that I have to update Zoom. 
and it was already started to update, but I canceled it. The thing is, every time I update something, other aspects on my laptop gets not um, start to misbehave. So I'm kind of late uh, in, in updating my, my, my software. So, so this is this is how it works with TCP. So, in TCP, in order to establish strong connection, let me go directly to here. You have to have three-way handshake. So this is the client here on the left-hand side, and this is the server. So the client will ask the server, hey, grant me a connection. The server will respond. So first, the server will, will look. So TCP is very CPU and memory intensive. So when you design a server, if you have your startup with a couple of your friends, and that email server will handle only certain amount, very limited amount of users, so like say 10,000. Because each one, each user will have um, a certain bandwidth and certain uh, power, CPU, and memory, like physical memory. So basically, the server will look into its own processes it's like, yes, I can accommodate two more users. So it will send back connection granted, as you guys see here. Then the server, the client was like acknowledge. Once this three-way handshake is done automatically and successfully, automatically because you as a user, you don't feel anything. You try to click on a, a couple objects, like put your name, uh, your name password, Log in, blah, 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 then you're in. You, you know, it just happens in the background. Once that happens, the server actually allocates physical resources for you for the whole session. That's why terminating the session, closing the connection, it's four way handshake. That's how valuable the resources TCP um, that the, the TCP use, uses. So in order to close the connection, the client it says finish if I end. The server will respond back with like acknowledgement or, or okay, whatever that is. Then it will wait for a time period and it will send finish. So in this time period, the TCP connection is waiting that you oh you click like back um, like backspace or you know you click on one like before the email closes you click on one object in the inbox something like you know to revive um, the connection. But normally it's very short period like this period is extremely short that would allow you to revive anything. Okay, um, I don't see it happening. Uh, and once you do that, you free up a physical space on the server, the email server that you're connected to, for other users to connect. So TCP is very sensitive in, in, in matching the speed or the bit rate or the packet rate or the segment uh, rate back and forth. Very sensitive in opening and closing the connection because it uses very... Um, real resources like hardware. When I say very real, like hardware resources, you know. And actually, if you work in, in the service design uh, groups, you will get oh, the CPU is two gigahertz, and each user needs like one one megahertz, so I can accommodate two thousand users. And of course, I would not get the full two, two gigahertz from that CPU. Probably I'll get like seventy percent. So um, is like only 7,000 users. And you put some mechanisms that 7,000 users will have full session, 7,001 will come and ask you here to grant them an access, the, the response will be no. There's no, there's no room for you. Um, that's what I wanted to show you guys today. That's what I told you is going to be a very short lecture. Um, 
So I'll, I'll wait for your questions. So you guys try to study or prepare questions for me and for the group here. Uh, I had a question related, related to the homework. Sure. Um, I'm just wondering how you're able to make a protocol faster without really needing to upgrade hardware. I just wouldn't the hardware have to be changed somehow to interact with the new software, or is it? Uh, okay. I'm just not. And then also, is it? No, 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 no. Look, look. Before we, before you, you go from that question, then we study last lecture. We spent like probably half of the last lecture talking about how you only upgrade the software and not the hardware, and we triple the speed. Yeah. Okay, so what's your question? We showed two times in, in the course. One in Aloha and Spotted Aloha. And one last time that you can successfully upgrade the software without upgrading the hardware. And in one, the, the Aloha, you got double the speed, Spotted Aloha. And last time, you got triple the speed without touching the hardware. But the other question is: it the only reason why it's become more pop? Well, then why wouldn't everyone do it? I feel like only because it's being pushed by Google, it's becoming more standardized. Oh, you're talking about quick now, or you're talking in general? Quick. So your first question, or the first part of the question, is how a software can make things faster without hardware. Do you think I answered that properly, or is it yeah. more? In okay. So what's the second part of the question? Would would it be as popular without the backing of Google? Oh, that's a very, 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 very nice question. So here's the thing about Facebook. I'm, I'm giving you another example, okay? With Facebook, there are like few social media networks came before Facebook, right? Yeah. But Facebook succeeded and everyone else pretty much failed. Um, sometimes you find two Italian restaurants serving the same food right in the front of like, cross, cross the street from each other. One succeeds, one, one not. For quick, yes, because of Google, but that's not the norm. Okay, normally the, the big guys, they push their, their protocols and, and standards. But it doesn't happen all the time. That's what I wanted to tell you. Okay. Um, like in the Italian restaurant example. You could find like literally two places next to each other. And one is very successful, one is not. And in case of Google, yes, because of the back end of Google. But sometimes like Aloha. Aloha came from the academia. Um, you know, SIP, like the session initiation protocol, the, it came from Bell Labs, at and um, And some other, like in, in, in peer to peer uh, protocols, some schools, like research groups, successfully lobbied for some routing algorithms to be the standard. So, to answer your question, I, I know I, I said too many things. To answer your question, yes. Probably quick, uh, like because of backing on Google, but because of it, it's good, you know. And uh, to continue, it doesn't mean that the the, the small guys will, will 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 fail. Like like if you have a small startup, because I've seen that so many times, small startup they could push their stuff too. Not as powerful as the big players, but you know. If you have some idea in your mind, don't be discouraged. That that's what that's the message coming to you. Did I answer your question or did yeah. I that's good, thank oh. you. Yeah, but it helps. Like see if you work for like big company, it it will help it will help you a lot. Okay, like I work for, for big company. And I have over 100 patents so far, being granted and filed or being filed. And without the help of the, the company I work for, you know, 
there was there was, there was no way I would be in that. It helps. It helps, to, but but that's not the only way to, to, to reach your goals. Okay. I know I spoke too much about this, but I don't know if I, my my point is clear or not. So if it's not clear, please feel for me. Feel free to tell me, Professor. You you totally answered a different question. Uh, you answered. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I, I guess quick is uh, the thing about quick guys like uh, like some at some point of or some aspects I do at work I'm a software architecture. Uh, I don't program, okay? I don't code. Probably I told you that before. But I design stuff. So when I talk to to, to, to programmers and if they have issues. I have to dive deep and few products I was talking to the developers is like oh the TCP like oh no 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 we don't use TCP anymore it's like so what do you guys use it's like oh we've been using quick for some quite time and a lot of the current product they have like quick as default so that's why I was like okay that's why I kind of pushed you guys to, to know more about it. And it, it's kind of neat because it's it's always good to know that you can mix two old technologies to come up with a new one. That's perfectly fine. So if you have an idea like this for a startup or, you know, for research or something, go, go for it. Uh, questions? Other questions? Uh, another question. Um, okay. So for, uh, okay, go ahead. Yeah, like when we discussed like the random access protocol, like uh, the Aloha is not at Aloha, and uh, we said like it's the most reliable one, right? Like when usually, uh, but like when you yeah. have more more users on the network, like it says like. Um, collision can happen more often so does that mean like it's even more reliable than other methods or protocol is still when there's a lot of users or what that's a very smart question so let me let me answer you i didn't really say more most reliable if i said that maybe i was not correct but i i believe i never said that but it's more the most efficient it's only reliable when you have small number of users. Okay. So what do you mean small number of users? Look at City College. If you go into every single classroom, you're going to find an access point, right? Yeah. So how many people you can fit in a class? In a classroom? 20, 25. 20. 20, 25. In your apartment or anyone's apartment, you're talking about how many people? Three, four people. In an office, like a, a typical office in Manhattan, a floor probably like one of those Manhattan offices probably have like 20, 30 people or 50 people. If you have 50, you probably have to access point. So if you look around you, you need a cluster for every 20 to 25 people. If you're comparing random or polling or some other mechanism, random will be the most efficient one and the most reliable one in this case. But if you're running an experiment, like an actual experiment or opnet, if you go above 25 or 50, you can have a lot of collisions and then the whole thing will fail. Um, this is why when you buy a router, it tells you exactly how many devices you can connect to. So most of your home routers, you're talking about like five to eight uh, users. So the router manufacturer, which, which is like all of them, like the 802.11, the Wi-Fi, they use the random, they dictate how many devices you can connect to. But yes, if you try to connect more than what's recommended, the number of users, yeah, it will, it will be a disaster. Okay, so that's why you find in the conference rooms, the huge ones, you're going to find more than one access point. You don't want to overload your access point unless you're doing something. Okay, 
but in the bigger scheme of things, it's most it's more efficient than uh, channel partitioning and uh, taking turns. It's also reliable or more reliable than taking turns because you don't have the single point of failure. Like the token ring, for instance, if you take the token down, you corrupt the file, the whole thing is done. Okay? Make sense? Yes, yes. Thank you. You're welcome. So, try to study the whole course, guys. I mean, after the midterm. But focus more on the, the design. Um, exercise that I gave you. You guys remember that? Everyone took screenshots of it. Um, and I'll ask you to, to, to calculate the capacity. So I say like, oh, like four users, each one used 100 packets. So that's like 400 packets. Um, and your CPU can handle like 400 or 300 packets. How many CPU you gonna use? Th simple things like that. So just make sure you have a small calculator, nothing complex. Okay. Um, make sure if your calculation you come up with like two CPU, don't don't put two CPU. All the dot points. Make sure you leave extra room. It's like oh, my calculations theoretical give two CPUs. Don't tell me more than two CPUs. No, tell me three or four. I want your engineering experience. Uh, sorry, engineering input. Um, so that's one question. The second question will be probably the random. Okay. You can't really claim that you took a telecommunication or data communication course without understanding how 802.11 works. So please make sure you understand that as well. And I don't mean that you copy and paste. Okay. Because once I see someone copies and pastes and like, okay, I, I, I need to under, to make sure that you understood and you wrote it out of your mind, you know? Of course, it's open book exam, but just want to make sure that you understood it. Um, and just focus also on, on, on the important aspects of the TCP. Okay, so probably, not probably, so let's, seal that now. So I'm going to get you guys three questions. You know, two questions, and one question will be from the TCP attack. Everyone is happy? Yes. Yes. Okay. Study hard, guys. Please, please, please. If you have a question, don't wait. Shoot me an email. Okay? And good luck, guys. Everyone knows when they're going to present, today, right? right? Yes. I'm sorry? That, uh, you're going to send that lecture today, right? Is that later? Yes, yes, yes. I'll okay. send the lecture like, once I finish the class. Yes. All right. Okay, guys. Have a wonderful night. And it was a privilege teaching you this semester. And I wish all of you the best of luck in your personal and professional life. Take care, guys. See you next time during the presentation. Take care. All Thank right. you so much, Professor. Thank Take you. care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.